Hello everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Accelerate Your Digital Transformation with Three Intent-Driven Campus Networking Innovations, sponsored by Huawei. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can type your question into the Q&A box, submit your questions to our speakers. All questions will be saved, so if you don't get to answer you today, we may follow up via email. At the bottom of the audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow help widget. You can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download in the green resource list widget. Towards the end of today's presentation, we'll ask for your feedback. A survey will pop open on your screen and we'll only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. Huawei would also like you to complete their questionnaire either during or at the end of today's presentation. It is currently on your audience console now and will also pop up at the end once the presentation is complete. Finally, an on-demand version of the webcast will be available about one day after the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I would now like to turn the event over to Enterprise Campus Networking Product Marketing Manager of, network, of the network product line at Huawei, Jason Ding. Jason? Hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah, can you hear me? Oh, yep, I can hear you, so it's over to you now. Okay, great, thank you, Hannah. So, good afternoon and um, even good evening for Sunnabar region globally. Um, thank you for joining this webinar. And uh, my name is Jason, being introduced by Hana and working for Huawei as a, a product marketing manager for the campus networking solutions. So today I'm going to spend uh, 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes to introducing um, how your campus networking being evolving and how what are the um, innovative technology could help you to build your digital campus. So when we starting talking about the campus networking, let's look at what a campus is. So uh, traditionally, we say campus is an environment that a lot of people be working together. It's a space. Uh, it's a lot of buildings that we call a campus. But the definite campus is changing in today's environment, especially we have those mobile devices. We have all the IoT things being connected. Actually, everywhere we're seeing is a campus. So uh, we see a lot of uh, vertical customers like uh, in manufacturing factory actually could be a campus. In retail industry, the retail stores actually went over the campus. And uh, in our business offices and in, also in the healthcare, we see hospital, different buildings could be the campus. So campus is not only mean how you could be connecting to your office environment, connecting to your mobile devices. It also means how you could enable your digital businesses in those environments. So as one example, uh, we have more than 180,000 uh, employees around the globe. And we have more than uh, 650 office, uh, offices around the globe. So when we talk, when we interview with IT manager of the Huawei, um, the CIO, they respond to us, the most challenging uh, pain point of seeing is there's a lot of the customer's issue or the, the employee's uh, the ticket to the IT manager, especially when we're having voice call, where we're having a lot of very important customer meetings. So how could you ensure the network is working properly to enable all my businesses at any time? And sometimes when even there's issue happened, how could you locate those issues, even fix those issues within a minute, not an hours, not days? So that kind of uh, daily issues being happening, they're increasing the people to managing the network because the network itself has become more complicated. So, um, so on the right hand side, we see that's a data we put out from the Huawei IT management system that looking at in the last three months, how the network system, how those uh, network issues are. And we're seeing that there's a 60% of the network issues is causing by either by access network, which means most of the, our access network are using Wi-Fi technology. And the other hand, which is about um, another 30%, which is causing by applications. So when we see applications, it means how your application, the quality of services look like. 
when you're having a voice call, when you're having a WeChat with someone, when you have a video conferencing, uh, when you are uh, uploading or downloading files through the cloud, how you those applications been running, how those quality services look like through your Wi-Fi network. So it looks like the major problem that's causing your network issue is coming from the Wi-Fi network, and uh, and there's a 40% which is from the wide network, your devices issues, and there's others. So. Let me give you a uh, very quick uh, poll questions to all those audience here today uh, who joined this meeting. So I got a three poll questions and you could uh, um, select the answers uh, you think is reasonable for you. The first one, if you're the employee in, in your environment, um, how often you take it to your corporate Wi-Fi network issues? Is that every week? or is that every month? I, I, I just want to better understand how the global uh, different enterprise, different customers are looking at, looking at these uh, issues. Um, and then uh, we will give you some of the suggestions and answers um, to how you could uh, better deliver a better performance to your network. So if you've done your uh, survey, let me run the result, okay. Yeah, they do have uh, every month issues. There are 15% audience which is having every month issues, which is uh, what we normally say. Um, but yeah, if there are 50% you're really lucky, you get a really good Wi-Fi network um, being working with. So let me run the next survey question with your IT manager. I don't know how much IT manager we have here today in the, uh, in the webinar. Uh, if you're an IT manager, uh, you could, uh, starting for this questions, um, how percentage of network issues can be solved? Uh, I, I think there's a not every network problem could be solved, but how, how percentage they are, we just uh, get a little bit of sense over there. Okay. Do we have answer yet? Okay. So I think there's no IT manager today, or there's a few IT manager you haven't um, given my answers. No worry, let's just move on to the next polling questions. So the third polling question is about um, how much of your overall troubleshooting during your normal spending. So I think uh, based on the question number three, I don't know if there's a few of you could uh, have some sense uh, when you are managing your network or operating your network, how long it's going to take to uh, locating your problems of your network. All right, let's see the result. Okay, so there's a uh, 50% uh, you're using, uh, you having your answers, which is uh, I think really that's really good a really good uh, numbers we're saying here, and uh, we we're trying to solving your problem to shorten your time um, to delivering a better, quick way to identify the network issues to then those 50% uh, of people are going to move it to 25% uh, people are going to move to the uh, using a much less of time to uh, diagnose the problems, deliver better user experiences. So um, here's a survey uh, from the industry that we're saying those are typical network issues we're saying. Uh, Wi-Fi, definitely 50% of the problems coming from the Wi-Fi network, especially for the corporate when you're using Wi-Fi for uh, mission critical businesses. And the second piece is about the network is getting more complicated. And, and there's a 20 to 30% of the network issues causing by men, causing by us, causing by IT manager. When you're fixing one issues, when you define new policy to your network, it may cause another problems. But the problem you may not know today, but it will appear in the future. The third one, when there's a new service that's being launched on, there's a new business that gives you the requirement to the IT manager. Um, the question will be how faster you could enable those services, how, could, how faster you could enable a retail store, how faster you could enable a department when they are moving to your buildings. Uh, you define new policy, you define new network for them specifically. So it is about timing. It's always the best. Uh, problems that the IT manager, especially the networking guy, is facing. Networking guy always say, oh, could you give me another one more week? I need to configure a lot of 
uh, firewalls, config lot of the network switches, and even I need to test the Wi-Fi network, need to make that happen. But the business don't wait so much time for you. So um, let's look at how we see those problems um, by using the intangible the cloud campus solution to from Huawei. So first of all, let's just say, what is intent driven? So basically, in the, uh, the old world, in traditional network infrastructure, we build the infrastructure with a wide network, with a, wide, with a wireless network, and also you have a local uh, network management system. If you have a different branch offices, if you have a different uh, headquarters, you're going to build a different network management systems. It's a very complex environment, and this policy didn't talk to each other. So um, we're trying to have a, a digital network above your physical infrastructures, and the digital network will going to mirror everything which is happening on your physical infrastructures. So we call that digital train. We steal the ideas from the industry 4.0, and the digital train of your network infrastructure actually it, it knows every second what is happening on your network. And another way, which is uh, we're using the cloud technology to bring, uh, uh, to manage all your campuses, all your branch offices in a single piece of glasses, in a single management system. And management system could be living in your public cloud. So it is a story not only for, it is a technology not only for the small branches, but also for the middle size, even larger size enterprises, to leveraging that technology. And um, on the top side, so we're seeing the network, especially the campus network, are using not only for office environments, but also enable a lot of digital businesses. Like in retail, uh, they're using the campus network for connecting their electricity electric labels and to automatically changing the price for different uh, from, from the time being. And for the classroom, for the education, they're connecting those things, things on the students. Then they can monitor the health status of the, each of the uh, students when they're uh, studying. So when the things, internet things, impacting the uh, network environments, and there's a new, lot of a new business innovations and digital businesses happening. So how could your networking be talking with those uh, different business applications? That's what we need to build at open platforms, building an open API systems. Based on those open API, you're able to build an ecosystem around your network infrastructure. Then you're not only providing connectivity, but you're also providing data. You're providing very valuable data to the different vertical industry partners and even for your business inside systems. So on the right-hand side, we're saying if you need those network infrastructure like that, you need those three layers infrastructures, you need a single one management system across your global, and you need an open uh, infrastructure to enable all your digital businesses, you definitely need those five uh, character we're saying here to be more intelligent, to be more management and operated more simplified, simplified, and to providing a much more faster connectivity, whatever, to your users or to your things. And even you need a security to protect your infrastructure. When the threat even living your network, you need to, using a minute or using a second, to migrate those threats. So uh, this is an overall picture about what is the intent-driven cloud campus. It express the future of your network going to look like, and also it connect where we are and how we're going to build that network in the future. So today I'm not going to move into a lot of technology details for the intent-driven cloud campus, but I would like to give you a really high-level uh, uh, overview of some of the major things we're done and to changing the network environment to change to deliver a better, simple way to more intelligent way to manage and uh, connect your users. The first way, or the first thing we're going to talk about uh, is about going to how could you enable your Wi-Fi network to be more smarter? 
So there's a lot of uh, new innovation that have happened on the Wi-Fi space, especially how you're going to manage your air interfaces uh, to be more smarter, to specific for specific users or for specific applications. So we call that one of the uh, innovation called Smart Radio with three, uh, uh, three technology that will make that happen. So in the middle side, we're going to talk about how you could be leveraging your AI technology based on network telemetry data. When you have the real-time data from your network infrastructures, how could you leveraging those data to let the network to run themselves, to let the network to provide you the suggestions how you could fix your network, how many issues you have, and how could you just one click to fix your network. And so third piece we're going to talk about how could you make your network to be more automatically how could you config your network without CRI without command line so uh, using minute to enable a virtual network is a, it is a reality it is a happen today so let me very quickly to jump into the first one we we call that smart radio there's a three main technology we're solving different issues in the Wi-Fi network. The first one, let me check, is there, uh, yes, there's animation is playing, which is good. So the first one we're going to solving is roaming issues. So when the mobile users are moving in your campus, um, the, the connectivity and also the uh, application when you're roaming, you're, you're using, uh, when, when the roaming is happening, it's always need to be reconnected because when the user signal goes down, then the user will be reconnected to another piece. So is there any way to make sure the user, when he is roaming, when he's uh, mobiling in your, in your campus, your application didn't go down, the quality of service didn't drop? So uh, we have the intelligent roaming system, which is when the user is moving your campus, all the AP is going to talk to each other and figure out which AP have a more channel as available for the users. So before the user signal goes down, goes dead, and the user will be switching to another AP, which will have a better signal coverage. So the user will seamlessly have a no accept, no uh, no sense how the uh, how I've been remotely been changing to another AP and my video and all the voice call voice conference is still going very well. In in the middle piece, we're saying is how you could just uh, be more smartly to plan your network, especially for your working space or your for uh, stadiums uh, in the in 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 the indoor location stadiums. So uh, we're providing a, a technology called DFA, which is dynamic frequency adjustments. So when you deploy your AP in your environment, you have to plan the AP first. You have to figure out which AP is using 4.4, 2.4 frequency, and which one is using 5 frequency, 5 gigahertz frequency. But you always need to think about these problems or to plan those complex network environments because there is some legacy infrastructure needs to be connected, like printers. They cannot be working on the 5G uh, frequency. So by having those technology we call DFA, you don't have to care about all those things. You don't have to configure which AP working on 2.4 or which AP working on 5. The only thing you have to do is using our uh, planning to and deploy those AP where they are and all those AP we're going to talk to each other so figured out how I should leveraging the 2.4 to coverage my network areas. And, uh, and meanwhile, we're going to be the best leveraging the 5G uh, gigahertz to providing the performance for all those users being connecting to my environment. So by the word we're just saying, we are, the network itself will calculate it themselves to best leveraging the 5G gigahertz to uh, connecting all the users and the things. And, uh, and the less of the, the less using the 4.4, 2.4 gigahertz to connecting those legacy infrastructures, then your, your network going to meet a 30% capacity uh, compared with the traditional way you manage your and operate your network.
And it's, it's the, the most of saying, most important thing is you're saving a lot of timing to planning and deploying your network. The third technology we're introducing here is we're seeing there's more and more video and a voice conferences happening today in our campus network environments. And uh, those are real-time applications. And real-time applications are facing critical issues. Um, how there's, when there's a amount of people are using the same signals, are using the same network in your offices, how could you providing the same user experiences across the campus or across your offices? So the technology itself is a little bit complicated. I'm not going into the detail how we do the algorithm but there's animation uh, could uh, demonstrate it, how we using the algorithm to dynamically changing the um, back of time of the video or the voice package loading to your uh, APs. But by having this technology, I could say uh, by compare with uh, uh, if you're not using the e EDCA technology or we call it intelligent EDCA, we've been uh, innovated based on the industry standards with a, a new algorithm being added over there. There's a 15% per user experiences in your camps could be provide, could, could be upgrading uh, compared with if you didn't using this technology, especially for your video and for your voice uh, communications. So all those technology being existing um, in today's shipping APs, if uh, those shipping AP are uh, 11AC Wave 2, or uh, we're one of the modules which is supporting 11AC, which is uh, industry. First, uh, we're supporting 11AC AP. All right, so give you a little bit uh, some of the animation, how it is going to look like, right? So in the office environment, on the left-hand side, there's so people are moving. And uh, by having the, uh, one of the small antenna, and you're going to trace those users and when they're moving and deliver a better distance coverage and better signal coverage. And those building, um, building to indoor location, a smart antenna are one of the innovation we have in the industry. And the second one we're saying is stadiums, right? The Wi-Fi is building for different scenarios. And in the stadiums, um, we are the first one having the three antenna be building to one APs and also providing uh, a dedicated small angle direction antenna, which is covering only one very small spaces. So by leveraging those antenna, you're, you're going to be more smarter to manage your Wi-Fi frequency, manage your Wi-Fi channels. So there's too many users in one space, right? So uh, you have to make sure that user, different users, each user have the same user experiences. So by building, the, by having the antenna be built into one access, po access point, you don't have to cling uh, to, the, to, to the air twice to install your APs. So it, it also saving a lot of the manpower, saving a lot of operational cost when you're deploying these uh, Wi-Fi network solutions. All right, the next one we're looking at is the education scenarios. So education scenarios, there's a lot of uh, uh, new applications being enabled in education space. For example, uh, the VR application, even the AR, and more and more teachers are using the iPad to enable their student to communicate with the children, uh, communicate with their teachers when they're doing the digital book or they're doing the digital uh, work when they back to home. So how could you enable those multi multimedia uh, applications being happened in real time in those uh, classrooms. So we having a, one of the AP which are supporting the treble radio antenna which has been built into one AP and they're working in the same time, the three antenna are working at the same time, a 2.4 and the 2G, a 2, 5G gigahertz uh, antennas. So by having those three antenna working at the same time, but without, and also solving the problem, how to solving the interference within one AP. So we are enable more users being connecting to your uh, education, to your classrooms, 
will enable a better user experiences for each users. So in one of the user cases, in one of the customer we're saying, we're able to connect 120 students in a one single AP. For each student are providing full megabyte performance. So it used to be done for four, two APs in different classrooms, but we could make it happen in one AP and saving 50% a capex cost for for the uh, for the for the schools. Here's a for retail uh, for hotels. So in hotel, we're seeing a lot of rooms and a lot of blockers. Those blockers are blocking those Wi-Fi frequency or blocking the signals. It is really expensive way to deploy your Wi-Fi in your uh, hotels. So we innovated one we called RU, which is only have the RF uh, in your AP, and it is actually it's not AP, it's intelligent uh, radio unit. And those radio units will be installed in different rooms in your hotel, and we have a one boxes, we have high performance AP, central AP, will manage all those RU. You don't have to care about RU, uh, for your management perspective, you only manage one piece of the uh, one uh, devices uh, from the uh, management perspective. So AP, central AP will be managed by the management systems you are seeing from the management consoles, and those are you are providing additional signals to coverage each rooms. So, and today we're also building the smart antenna into those RUs, and uh, then they could providing uh, even great. Uh, user experiences for different hotel customers. And for retail and some of the industry, even the manufacturing, uh, they're leveraging the IoT technology uh, in your Wi-Fi network. Normally, you have to build a two system, one system for your IoT connectivities, another system for your Wi-Fi network. And today we're building those two infrastructure into one boxes. So in one APs, they're including three slots, which are able to support the different types of IoT connectivities. So we have been using, been requesting this feature by a lot of retail customers. Um, it really solving their issues, how I could managing uh, both my Wi-Fi network and also the things network within a one box without to deploying two network infrastructures. Here's a, one of the example in retail uh, industry, uh, which is happening in Europe actually. It is, they're the, one of the biggest uh, retail company um, in Germany, and they have a global store across the global, and they're raising one question about, um, I have a, more than 10,000 stores in globally. I to manage those stores. I want to providing those uh, things being connected, providing the guest Wi-Fi services to all those um, visitors when they uh, when they shopping in our retail. How can I manage that network by leveraging the IT resources I have today? The second question will be, I don't want to use a public cloud to store my data to manage my network. Is there any way I could leverage the cloud technology, but also I have the uh, control of all my data from those stores? So that question raised to Huawei, and we provide a solution, which is we're using cloud management system, but the cloud management system could be installed in their private cloud. It doesn't have to be in your public cloud. And meanwhile, we're providing a unified Wi-Fi connectivities, both for your um, guest Wi-Fi connectivity, use guest access, but also for your things being connected. So they're providing the electric labels to dynamically changing the pricing uh, through the time being. So those labels will be through the RFID, they will be connected to the IT that the Huawei is providing, and it could be managed through the one system. And the meanwhile, those labels need to be communicated uh, with their external system, with their uh, retail management systems. So we have the open API are communicating with their uh, external system, the retail management pricing management system, so they could actually change the pricing uh, dynamically. So which are saving a lot of a cost for those manpower who are daily working in those retail to changing those uh, physical labels on pricing, 
but also uh, saving a lot of cost. How that for IT management system, for IT manager to manage their 10,000 uh, retail across the global. So this is a one of the example how we could um, leveraging the cloud campus technology, cloud campus solution uh, with IoT building with a better Wi-Fi experiences with a cloud management uh, system uh, and also could be deployed in the private cloud and also enable the open API to enable all those uh, vertical applications that are enable one of the retail customers to enable their retail 4.0 uh, innovations. All right, so um, here's uh, the, when we talk about the Wi-Fi network, which is a big issue which is happening. So the second one we're raising, uh, we remember the poll questions uh, at the beginning, and also the survey from Huawei. There's a 30% of the problem causing by the Wi-Fi network, even more. So how could you fix those problems? Or how could you identify those issues before it happens? How could the system telling you there's issue my uh, trigger uh, better user, uh, uh, poor user experiences. So uh, we build the uh, big database assistance, uh, which name, which is Camp Sign, which is looking the every second of your network what is happening. So Camp Sign is leveraging one of the technology which is called telemetry. And telemetry is being supported by Huawei, all the switches and also all the APs. And the Huawei switch and the AP are going to report all the data in real time not by minutes, but by seconds. In seconds, we report all those data, network status data, to the Campus Insight system. So Campus Insight look at a big databases, and we have building the, uh, artificial intelligent algorithm based on those databases. So we have a defined more than 30 to 40 uh, network issues, the typical network issues that are happening in your network environment. So by using the Camp Inside, the system will telling you if you have the network air interface issues, do you have the network connectivity issues, or do you have your uh, voice or video performance issues? So I'm going to play a short video after this slide to give you a little bit sense what is Camp Inside looking like, looking like, and how the magic going to play to see all those uh, uh, user experiences. So before moving to the uh, short video to give you a demo, um, I'm going to introduce on right hand side uh, how we could do one of the advanced feature we call low cost identifications. So high frequency, high interference uh, uh, between two between different APs in your Wi-Fi network. High interference is one of the major issues is happening in your Wi-Fi network. The two AP, when they have the uh, same channels, then they will have the uh, interference, each other's. So when the user has been connecting to those AP, they have been connected, but there's no performance. There's no data being transferred between uh, their, for their applications. That we call it high interference. So traditional way, it's very hard to diagnose issues. The IT manager have to using their personal tools and to uh, test their Wi-Fi network location by location and figure out which AP are talking to which AP. They have the same frequency coverage and then we could adjust through the command line or through the wireless LAN AC. So today the situation is different because we're using the big data, we know uh, where we have those issues when the user has been connecting those AP and being have a low frequency, a low uh, performance, and we know those two AP have the high interference issues. And where are those AP being located? So this is a predictor fault identifications. Then we based on historical data, we're going to build a dynamic baseline. So baseline is based on the historical data. For example, your last 30 days, your frequency, your, your interference actually is happening, but not at such a high rate. So the red line, the green line over here, which is demonstrating or telling you the IT manager, today you have a different situations. Today, those two APs are not working each other. So they cannot providing a connectivity, even uh, the good user experiences in this space. For this uh, this uh, office environment. 
and that we call the issue. The issue is based on how normal the situation is and how abnormal the situation is happening today. Then we will get a warning to the IT manager and the system will give you some suggestions how you're going to fix those problems by using manually. But further, further than using manual configuration to a close issue, we're providing one click to solving these problems. So you, you, for the IT manager, you only click one button and then the interference will be solved through the Azure controller, through the automatic fixing, uh, automatic fixing and the configurations without to typing one command line in your network. So this is a much more smarter way and the saving time and the saving uh, operational cost for your IT environment. You could stand, you could uh, sitting in your office, in your IT manager's office without leaving your chair and fixing the network issues and problems. So here's a quick demos. Um, Here's a quick uh, video going to play for you and how those uh, camps inside are going to look like. Okay, so first of all, uh, we're saying it, the, the screen here is about Wi-Fi connectivities. So we define three types of Wi-Fi issues. And the network could be playback. You could look at how the yesterday network looked like. And even more, we're going to looking at each user's experiences. When the user been connecting to your network in the morning time, in the a.m. in the morning, and through the APM, you know how the user's going in your network. So this is a very short uh, demonstration how the uh, Camps Inside is going to look like. And if you're very interested about Camps Inside, leave your email, and we, we will have a sales, uh, a sales uh, specialist uh, helping you to demonstrate this system for you. And while we, I, while we ourselves is using the Camps Inside for a long time, we're starting the innovation uh, t uh, three years ago with Huawei IT, and um, we've been using the system uh, for two, more than two years. And uh, by leveraging the data we're having, the system is getting more smarter and smarter because we've been training the system daily. So at the end of, the, uh, at the end of this, this year, so Campus Insight is going to manage all the Huawei campus, the global, all the campus across the global. So there's more than uh, 67,000 AP will be managed through the Campus Insight system. So we are expecting to see more data will be trained it, the system going to be more smarter, and then uh, we could ship in the solution uh, with some more intelligent road cost uh, capabilities to uh, enterprise customers. All right, at the beginning, we talked about how to quickly enable your new services. So VXLAN is using, traditionally been using as a technology be using for uh, creating a data center network. But today, uh, we're leveraging the VXLAN technology uh, to, for, for the campus. So on the left-hand side, we see it is very complicated if you need, need to adding a new business unit in your networking environment. So you have to config boxes by boxes to enable those services being, uh, this new department being enabled because they have a different security policy, uh, different access, uh, protocol, access policies. So we, need, we are thinking that by leveraging the VXN technology, we're thinking the network in a different way. How about we building the network on the virtual layer? How about we have the physical network and then we build a different virtual network for, for, different, for different user cases, for different business applications? So rather than talking about the technology, um, I'm going to play a very short video for you and uh, how the VXN will be created through a minute by using a minute. So here's a, a, our VXLAN topology and uh, architecture look like. So um, in VXLAN network, we have access layer, we have edge layer, and also we have a border layer we're going to communicate with uh, our routers, communicate with the gateways. So within the campus, you, first of all, you have to create a virtual fabric. Then at the virtual fabric in the edge, you have to define how the edge is being communicating with those access uh, switches or access points. 
So we are the first uh, one of the vendor which is saving a lot of cost for the customers. We create the VXLAN uh, topology which is uh, based on your edge network, not based on your access network. So actually the edge will be more smartly communicating with your access network to regarding the uh, user authentications, even the policy being defined. So which means you don't have to replace all your all access network to enable the VXLAN capabilities because there's more access uh, switches and access point being exist in your uh, today's network environment. So only the call and migrate uh, the edge switches need to be upgraded to a new hardware or to upgrade to the new software. Then you will have these capabilities which are saving a lot of cost compared with you have to replace a new network infrastructure to enable these services, to enable the VX. So here's a very short um, demonstration and a screenshot for the Huawei uh, VXLAN uh, management systems. So it is all through the Azure controller system. It is an SDN-based system. First of all, you have to define the name of the VXLAN, which department you're going to use, and uh, how many users you're going to get in the VXLAN, how many subnet you're going to create. And then you can just select the physical location where those VXLAN will be existed. So you're choosing there's a building one and a building two you're going to be connecting or using the VXLAN. That's where the department exists. And you're going to choosing which switch is going to, which switch in port going to be connecting those users. Or those users are going to connect through which switch in port. And then you click confirm, the VXLAN network will be created a new network will specifically for this department will be created. So that's very simple uh, demonstration how you are simplified without using one command line to create a new network for your new businesses. And then IT manager is starting to define policies for these users. So here's an example from the Thailand, uh, from the uh, education customers, high education customers, who's using uh, VXLAN technology to solving a different problems. So they have additional servers um, in across their campus. Um, the service utilization are different, vary by buildings. Some of the schools they have a better uh, uh, percent of utilization, and some of the uh, building, they only have a 20 to 30 percent of utilizations. So the IT manager from the campus, from the, uh, the school, there's, he's thinking, how could I, is there possible I create a VXLAN to cover across my campus to connecting all those servers, and I deploy the VM across the campus, then I could leveraging all the computing power across the campus, across the uh, uh, across the network. So they, we, we communicate with them and providing the VXN technology and to connecting all those servers by creating a, a purely VXN uh, network across their campus. And then they could building the infrastructure, the server infrastructure, the virtual server infrastructure. Um, in, in, their, in their network. They're saving a lot of timing uh, to, uh, de uh, they're saving, uh, they are, they could better to leveraging their computing powers and they are very quickly to enable their services in their new offices or their new applications in their campus. So this is a very good way to uh, um, explaining how the benefit the customer could get from the VXN technology. I think we're going to, uh, all the big camps are going to using the solutions. So um, we've been building the campus network not only for, not only with Huawei themselves, but also we are partner with the uh, vertical uh, industry uh, partners. Uh, we're focused on the manufacturing, education, government, retail, even the energy industry. 
we have a, a different layers openness to enable all those partners could leveraging the campus network, could leveraging the IoT, even the Wi-Fi technology to be more smarter to uh, manage their things, manage their businesses. So at last, I would like to just give you a little bit of sense how our business looks like in globally. So we actually are the global number two player on the campus networking. So when you regarding when you talk about the uh, campus switches or you talk about wireless LAN. So we received a lot of industry award and we are the close uh, to the leader quadrant in the metro quadrant last year, uh, this year actually. And uh, we have the beautiful design, the Wi-Fi APs, uh, which are being awarded by the IF. With that, here's uh, all the equipment, uh, solutions, software piece, and hardware we're providing to the market. And you can see all those information on our website. And finally, we're uh, serving a lot of customers global. And uh, in all those regions, we have uh, our branch offices. We have sales are ready for you to talk with. And all those uh, features we're talking about will be, uh, some of them are shipping today, some of them are going to shipping very quickly at the end of this year. All right, Hannah. I think that's uh, all I'm going to present today to all my audience. And um, I think we still have a 20 minutes, uh, 12 minutes for the Q&A. Thank you, Jason. Um, so if you do have any questions um, for our speakers today, please do send them in via the Q&A widget. Um, Jason, is uh, Daniel with you? Or Daniel, are you on the line? Yes, I'm online. Hi, Daniel. Um, so whilst we're waiting for some questions to come in from the audience, I wondered if there was anything that you would like to ask Jason? Do you have any questions? Okay, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to know uh, what's the differences between the uh, the company side and the traditional MNAs? Because I, I, I think that is that the traditional MNAs also provide some monitoring or troubleshooting functions. Yeah, yeah so, so um, um, some of the Yes, some of the um, uh, client are asking the question about is Camp Inside is uh, an advanced version of your network management system. Actually, our answer providing to customers are yes and no. So it do actually as a daily tools for IT manager to manage your IT, uh, network infrastructures. It also no, which means it is not a network topology management system. It is helping you to solve a problem, which is you're never going to having those features in your network management systems. You never have those capability to looking into your network even three days ago or 30 days ago to looking at how one particular users are using your network, are leveraging your Wi-Fi network to communicate with someone else. So the campus inside is providing a really new way of a very new way to enable this IT manager to look at all your network data in a digital way. Then you could able to do the operation and management to be more proactively. So it connect it collect those data in seconds, not by minutes. There's a lot of uh, technology differences compared with uh, traditional network management systems. It didn't provide you all the notice about what is happening on your network. It provides you the suggestions. It provides you the issues which is being calculated. Those issues are not being reported by the network. Those issues are being calculated by the AI systems. So 
when the AI system telling users issues, which means those issues are not being happened traditionally in your historical data, we don't have those issues. And today that happened. So it is always comparing with your network itself. So actually the campus inside will learn how your network behavior, how your network being using daily. Then they could provide you some guidance and could solve your problems ahead, ahead of time. That's great, thank you. Um, we have a question here. Um, what is the difference between Huawei Smart Antenna AP and other manufacturers? Okay. So um, Huawei Antenna technology is using dual band hi hybrid and the do parallelization over overlay design, which is um, we're solving a problem when you have the two antenna working at the same frequency, then you have to sometimes it's going to interference each other's within one AP. So Huawei smart antenna is have a special design within one boxes, within one AP, to best leveraging those two channels, but also, but also not interference each other's. So this is a physical design plus some algorithm that we've been tested in the lab. And uh, we, could, we, we could guarantee we could providing a better uh, connectivity uh, and a better users will be able to connect it through those APs. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I have another question um, for you here. And um, what is the difference between the Campus Insight and the traditional NMS server? Yes, Hannah, I think I just answered the questions uh, in the first one. Oh, apologies. Um, let me just see if we have any more questions here. So it looks like um, we've answered all of the questions that we have currently. Um, do you have any final remarks at all, Jason? Yes, just uh, we're well, back to the topic we're starting. Um, how we're seeing campus is changing. Uh, the campus is not only for working, for officing, the campus is more connected, uh, enable your digital business, a uh, digital businesses. So um, by having solving the problem of user network issues or deliver the better user experiences and to saving a lot of the cost on how to manually configure your network and also to be more quickly to enable your uh, services above your network is uh, what we campus, what Huawei campus do. So uh, Huawei Cloud Campus is one of the solution are able to providing all those capabilities enable those digital campus uh, um, in, in near future. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Jason. So, I think um, that's a good ending for our webinar today. You're great. Thank you, Hannah. Okay, if anybody does have any further questions for Jason, feel free to put them in the survey, uh, either that should be on your screen now or the one that is on your audience console or will pop up at the end um, and I will pass them on. Um, thank you, Jason, for an insightful and comprehensive um, presentation today. Just to remind the audience, and um, the archive version will be available about one day after um, the end of today's event. And if you do want to download today's slide deck, that is available to download in the green resource list widget. Thank you for all for attending, and if you have any questions, please let us know.